What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today, once again, we are going to tune in and read along with the Glass Notes Insights on-chain analysis week 29. Let's get into it. But before that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. And uh, also, follow through any of the description. There's a bunch of helpful links down there, okay? Some things I find truly uh, helpful, okay? Uh, Odyssey, Twitch, these are all really cool, uh, new decentralized, not so new, but decentralized social media platforms where we can start to get our voice into our hands, okay? This is Web3 before they were calling it Web3. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think, okay? I really appreciate any feedback that's coming through. So without further ado, let's get into it. Trading below the realized price. Bitcoin prices have now traded below the realized price for over a month with many signals that a deep and complete capitulation has occurred. As a result, numerous signals indicate that genuine bottom formation could be underway. The Bitcoin market caught a breath of upwards relief this week, rallying from 18,999 to the upper, limb, upper end of the consolidation range at 21,596. This follows a volatile response across markets early in the week as US headline CPI inflation hit a 40-year high of 9.1%, as reported. There is also a challenging backdrop of growing civil unrest, rising energy prices, and source, uh, resource scarcity in many nations around the world. Within this context, the Bitcoin and wider digital assets market has already have already experienced one of the heaviest and fastest downward repricing events in their history. This process has cleared a great deal of excess leverage from the system and has driven Bitcoin prices below the realized price, which is the estimated cost basis of BTC holders. In this edition, we will study the current Bitcoin market structure through the lens of both unrealized held coins and realized spent coins, losses by various investor cohorts. The target of this study is to give Sorry, the target of the study is to gauge whether a similar degree of seller exhaustion is in play compared to previous bear market cycle lows. This tool can help structure a case and probabilities for a bear market bottom forming around 20k. Life under the sea. Kind of like SpongeBob, right? To start this piece, we'll first define what it what it's meant by realized value and unrealized value, as these concepts will be foundational to the insights that follow. Realized value is the spent coins, is the difference between the value of a coin at the time of disposal and at the time of acquisition on chain. For example, an investor buys a half a Bitcoin at $40,000 and then withdraws it from an exchange. The investor then redeposits it for sale at 20000 here they have 0 0.5 times 20,000 minus 40,000. So that's a negative $10,000 in realized loss. Then there's unrealized value, unspent coins. is the difference between the current value of a coin and the value at the time of acquisition on chain. In the example above, if the investor still holds the half Bitcoin and the price is trading at 21,000, they will hold an unrealized loss of 0.5 times 21,000 minus 40,000, so that'd be minus 9.5K. The realized price is one of, if not the most widely recognized Bitcoin on-chain models, and is often considered to be the on-chain acquisition price cost basis of the Bitcoin supply. It is currently trading at 22,092 versus current spot price of 21,060, which puts the average Bitcoin investor at an unrealized loss of minus 4.6%. The chart below shows how previous bear cycles have all bottomed and established an accumulation range below the realized price. Time spent below the realized price ranges from 7 days in March of 2020 to 301 days in 2015. 
if we exclude March 2020 as a because it's a flash event because the COVID crash across all markets, an average time spent below the realized price is 197 days, compared to the current market with just 35 days on the clock. We can visual visual. We can visualize the aggregate unrealized profit loss within the Bitcoin network by taking the ratio between market price and realized price yielding the MVRV ratio. A high MVRV ratio greater than 1.0 signifies a larger degree of unrealized profit is held within the system. Historically, values exceeding 3.0 have signaled overheated bull markets. A declining MVRV ratio in blue signifies reducing profitability in the system. This is the result of both falling prices, lower MV, and also coin redistribution. As investors take profits and sell coins acquired at cheaper prices, the new buyers at higher prices, higher RV, a larger, a large bearish divergence can be seen between the April and November 2021 all-time highs as a result of this mechanism, shown in blue. The low MVR ratios, less than 1.0, in red signify the market price is below the average investors on chain acquisition price this is typical of late stage bear markets and often associated with bottom formation and accumulation the mvrv ratio is currently trading at 0.953 minus 4.67 percent unrealized loss which is not as deep as the average of 0.85 minus 15 percent unrealized loss seen in previous bear cycles this may mean further downside and or consolidation time is required to establish a bottom. However, it may also signal that the greater degree of investor support exists in this bear cycle. In addition to the realized price, we have a number of supporting on-chain pricing models which tend to attract spot, price during, uh, spot prices during late stage bear markets. We have the delta price, which is 14215 is a form of half fundamental, half technical hybrid pricing model. It is calculated as the difference between the realized price and the all time average price. Delta price has previously caught the bottom wicks of bear markets. Then there's the balance price, 17,554, which takes the difference between the realized price the transfer, and the transferred price, which is coin day time weighted price. This can be thought of as a form of fair value model capturing the difference between what was paid, the realized cost basis, and what was spent, the transfer. Both the 2015 and 2018 bear market lows were set with a short term wick down to the delta price in the green zone. However, both accumulation ranges spent most of the bottom formation processes, process trading between the balance price and the realized price. Coins change hands, unrealized loss. Market bottom formation often has a signature of large positive swings in unrealized profit and loss. This is a result of the capitulation and coins redistribution and coin redistribution to new buyers who are now less sensitive to price fluctuations. Thus, we can start by isolating only those coins which hold an unrealized loss, like in the 2021-22 cycle buyers, to calculate their aggregate USD value. With the market trading between 17.6k and 21.8k, the aggregate unrealized loss has ranged between 16 uh, between 165 billion and 195 billion. Note how the total unrealized loss in the post-November all-time high era was much larger in comparison to the May to July 21 period. Even when prices were at 29000 this as a result of coin redistribution during and after the August to November rally, and it's the same mechanism that created the bearish MVRV divergence. This generally confirms that the August to November rally was more akin to a bear market relief rally than a resumption of the bull market, which is something I've always thought. The chart below shows this total unrealized loss as a proportion of the current market cap 
To normalize for size, here we can see that the total unrealized losses are equivalent to around 55% of the market cap, which is larger in, than in March of 2020 and not dissimilar in magnitude to the 2018 bear market lows. The gradual downtrend of this metric shown in green during largely sideways accumulation style price action is indicative of improving holder profitability. Coins are sold during capitulation events and bought by lower time preference buyers. Losses transition from the unrealized loss to realize and coins are thus revalued to a new and lower cost basis with a new owner. As, price, as prices start to rise, these newly acquired coins switch from holding an unrealized loss to an unrealized profit, usually starting the bullish cycle again. <clears throat> Inspecting the total BTC supply and profit can bolster this argument. When prices fell to 17,600, a total volume of 9.216 million BTC were holding an unrealized loss. However, after the 18th of June capitulation, one month of consolidation, and a price rally to 21,000, this volume has declined to 7.68 million BTC. What this suggests is that 1.1.5 million Bitcoin were last transacted have a cost basis between 17,600 and 21,200. This indicates that around 8% of the circulating supply has changed hands in this price range. We can also inspect the coins holding an unrealized profit, this time through the lens of long and short term holders. We can see that all previous bear market lows reach a point where there is effectively no short-term short -term holders in profit as the market dives well below their uh, acquisition price. For strong market recovery, analysts can monitor whether the volume of short-term holders in profit swells rapidly should prices rally out of the consolidation range. An event like this has followed every major bear market floor as investors who uh, capitulated transferred their coins to new buyers with a lower and thus less price sensitive cost basis. Deep capitulation realized losses. In order for a market floor to be established, Bitcoin investors typically need to experience a wide range, wide ranging capitulation event. This acts to flush out all remaining marginal and forced sellers, effectively creating seller exhaustion. May and June of 2022 have seen two such events, both during the Luna collapse and when prices plunged below the 2017 cycle all-time high on June 18th. On a 30-day sub-basis, these events triggered a total realized loss of $27.77 billion and $35.5 billion over a 30-day window, respectively. As shown, these eclipse anything seen historically on a USD basis. The same can be said about BTC denominated losses, which are so large that we have to look back to 2011 when BTC was trading below $3 to find an equivalent. A simply staggering volume of BTC locked in a realized loss between May and July with 538,000 BTC spent during the Luna collapse and another 480,000 BTC spent on June 18th. The structure of the ASOPR metric also displays many similarities to bear market capitulation events. As profitability declines, investors start to lock in increasingly large losses until a final waterfall moment of capitulation takes place. The market eventually reaches to seller exhaustion, prices start to recover, and investor pain starts to subside. A recovery of the AS ASOPR back towards and ideally above 1.0, would help bolster the observations above that complete capitulation has taken place, accumulation is underway, and the market is well recovering. The proportion of transferred volume and profit is also uh, has market structure similar to previous bear market lows. 
During the 2015 and 2000, 2018 capitulation phases, over 58% of transfers of transfer volume was realizing a loss, and momentum had compressed after months of bearish price action. As the market started to bottom, a greater proportion of coin volume had a lower cost basis and spending was no longer heavily dominated by panic sales and or for sellers. At the moment, 54% of transfer volume is in loss, 46% in profit, which is very close to the 2015-18 recovery levels, similar to ASOPR upwards recovery of this metric would provide a signal that seller exhaustion may have been reached and recovery could be underway. Impacts on supply dynamics. To close out this piece, we will inspect the realized cap HODL waves, which map out the distribution of the USD wealth stored in Bitcoin by various age bands. We have split this into two cohorts, two groups, coins aged three months or less, which is hot money, and coins aged three months or more, hodler money. The total USD value held in hot money is in a structured downtrend and has now fallen below 20%. This describes two phenomena. One, older coins have largely slowed their spending, else these younger age bands would be swelling as is the case in bull markets, as long-term investors take profits. This is a signal of hodler conviction. 2. Long-term investors are gradually accumulating hot coins and taking them off the market, allowing them to age and mature in cold storage, as seen in the WOC27 with historically large exchange withdrawals. Finally, inspecting the older cohorts of coins, we can see the mirror image where over 80% of the USD wealth is now older than three months, acquired before the Luna collapse. This trend continues to increase, driven strongly by the six-month to one-year and one-year to two-year brackets. This is despite a great majority of the capitulation and forced sellers being from these six-month to two-year cohorts, as we explored in week 26. Again, this has numerous hallmarks of the Bitcoin market approaching seller exhaustion. Conclusions The Bitcoin market has, cor has corrected hard and fast in 2022, driven by the unwind of excess leverage and a plethora of forced seller and liquidations. In a relatively short 7-month period, BTC has traded from an all-time high and all the way into what resembles a bear market bottom. In the piece above, we explored the current market price. Sorry, in the piece above, we explored the current market structures through the lens of unrealized and realized losses, seeking signals of seller exhaustion. A common thread amongst almost all metrics explored above, and is a thread resembling the majority of bear market lows in the past, albeit lacking a component of duration. Against a backdrop of extremely challenging macroeconomic and geopolitical turmoil, Bitcoin is reaching peak investor saturation by high conviction hodlers and is becoming quite a plausible and becoming quite plausible that a genuine bottom formation could be underway. Let me know what you think. Um, I really liked this piece. Where were they talking about it? Um, the piece about that the run up to 69,000 from what was it? Uh, April to no, yeah, the or August to November rally was more akin to a bear market relief rally than a resumption of the bull market. Now, this, so that's this, uh, let's see, da -da. come on, just starting this new Apple Pencil. So that whole section right there, this goes into something that I have long kind of looked at here as uh, that... Oh, let's take off some of these things. And of course, usually I don't do this, 
but um, I want to. I got a new tool here. Okay, let's see. All right, there we go. That that this up here, this number, this five, that that this is really. Come on. Here we go. That really we have something like like this going on and that this whole um, like this was a uh, oops kind of more of a no that's not how it works <laughs> let's try it without the apple pencil boom Okay, it starts there, it goes A, B, and then C. So that has to move there. There we go. All right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> maybe it's not A, B, C, maybe it's X, Y, Z or something like this. But this looked more like a running flat or expanded flat, I should say, that as the price ran above this, it didn't rise that much more higher, you know? And that this whole thing could be more of a relief rally and that really all of this, oh, let's see, let's get rid of that, that all of this, um, Yeah, see this, if you look at it that way, this only pulled back at about a 382, which is very indicative of a wave four kind of action. And so if we look at that, then this wave five is right on par for like, you know, leading up, who knows how long it takes. It could take some more time to, to kick back up. But uh, we will see. I'm really interested in let me know what you think of all of this. Um, you know, this is certainly not any sort of financial advice. But uh, interesting stuff to say the least. So, yeah, leave me a comment down below. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Let's just keep it all polite in our discourse. And I'll see you on the next one. Love you all. Peace. Peace.